If you're watching this and in a hurry, you're going to need two 13s. There's a bolt here. And the nuts here. Now on all the nuts here, you just loosen them down all the way. Don't take the nut totally off because this will drop down far enough to get the belt around the top of the pulley. There's two bolts here. And then there's one up front. Your head to take the tire off, so you got to jack it up. You have to jack it up anyway, so that transmission can drop. And the last one, you can see the head of it down here. So you can see the nut. Yeah, there you go. So just loosen those, don't take the nuts all the way off, and that will drop far enough to get the pulley down. Or get to uh, get it so you get on the pulley. There are two three quarter inch nuts here. You gotta loosen them up and let this tensioner off. It's supposed to be 66 pounds of draw strength on the if you actually have the belt tension gauge. I don't. I just tightened it up, you know, fairly tight. It seems to be holding. Same thing with this transmission. Bolt there, two there, and one up front. So fairly easy to do. Four bolts, of course, for your tire. But you have to jack it up in order to do this, and there's your routing. It looks weird, but uh, it seems like these are supposed to be the two belt pulleys and then you got your engine and your tensioner it's not exactly how you would think it'd be but it's kind of weird so enjoy the video i hope that helped you hey you see guy 1948 here had my first major fail on this mz magnum at 35.4 hours was driving along and everything was going good and then all of a sudden I quit driving my belt came off my drive belt it's not sheared it's a little a little ate up but not, not awful but uh, I don't know if you can see it way back in there is the pulley and I can't get this side back on there so I have a feeling I'm gonna have to drop this transmission i'm gonna have to look at that but uh yeah that's that's not good i'm glad i was in a spot it was easy to hook a winch on it and throw it back on the trailer otherwise i've been pushing it uh so the mowing job i'm on isn't done yet i'm gonna have to get uh, my backup mower and go finish it but uh starting to think i should have bought that toro titan for a lot of reasons but mostly uh, this here is just this is a, a homeowner grade mower well so is the toro but it's a little bit heavier if you're watching this i am sorry that means your belt has come off on your bad boy mz magnum and the manual has no instructions on it they mention how to ten check the belt tension and how to tension it but that is it. They do tell you how to change out the neck belt, though. So this here, useless. This is one of those, oh, you got to take it to the shop to do kind of deals. Not a fan of those. Here's another thing. Look how small this drive belt is. That's a 5 eighths. Is that a half inch, maybe? Yeah, probably. But, uh... The only way to get this back on there, if it's come off around the pulley, is going to be, you know, you're going to have to drop one of these transmissions down, whichever one that's not around, to get it around there. Because there's not enough physical space between the pulley and the metal to get the belt in between it. So looking at this, these two are going to have to come out. This one, which goes on a spacer down to this nut there's also one on the front there's also this one probably just be ahead to take both of them out and pull that whole rod out of the way but we'll see when i get to that 
And I see a bolt that's way down in here underneath. Yeah, that right there. And honestly, that's all I'm seeing. So if that's all it is, and maybe this linkage is going to have to pop off. It's just clipped on, it looks like, most clip-on style. So we'll take all those out and see where that gets us. Hopefully, it solves our problem. To make things easier, I'm just going to take this tire off, too, so we can get down in there a little bit easier. Now, I couldn't find the exact bolt, but we're just going to make this work. Uh, it actually doesn't have a size on it, does it? Whatever. It's working for our purposes. Come on, there. There it goes. Hope this thing up a little bit more. I do have a sketchy Pittsburgh Harbor Freight Jack stand over there. So, what you're going to need are 13s. I only got half inches right here that I can find. So, we're going to start. I'm just going to try loosening these and see if I can get leave the bolts on there and just get this down far enough. Because it doesn't need much to get that belt through there. We're going to try not to take this all the way off. I say as I about take it all the way off. That way we don't have to drop the hole. We have to drop the whole thing. up under there, that one. Oop, okay. Well, I let it come down a little bit. What are we holding up on the, here's our next highest one. Yeah, that one, okay. Well, we could probably take one of these out. Might be enough. Let's see. I'm gonna have to move the angle here. You know, I don't have my shorter tripod with me at the moment. I can't find it. I'll uh, see if that works. Let's see if you guys can see it. We're dropped far enough down up here that I can get the belt snaked around and back where it needs to be. I'm going to. Uh, and we got that side. That side didn't didn't jump off. It's still where it needs to be. But I'd imagine it, yeah, it's about the same setup. There's a bolt there, bolt there. So they got long enough threads, you can just lower them down a bit. But this is still something. Your belt flies off in the field. You might not have all the tools. You need a 13, you need a jack, you need a good place to jack off of. I'd recommend a jack stand, take your tire off. This is not an infield repair for the most part. I mean, it depends on how how hardcore you are about it. But uh, this is probably going to be a re like it was yesterday and everything's going to be hot under here. I had to let it cool down. So, yeah, I think that's going to fix our problem. We'll, uh, I'm going to put the tire back on, tighten everything back up, and then fight with this uh, spring because this has to go on the inside. I'll show you the diagram here. This diagram doesn't show up in the manual and it's kind of confusing because yeah, that one's a little bit further forward but it's not really much further forward than that one. And this is showing, like I guess here's the engine. 
I don't totally get what this thing is showing. Because this isn't the deck belt, because that's up under the... Yeah, if that was... Well, if it was unmarried, right there. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. But there's your tensioner. Unless that's supposed to be the engine pulley, come off that, wrap around that, and go there to there. Maybe that's the way that I feel like that's drawn out in such a weird way. But that's what it looks like it's showing. There's your engine, there's the tensioner, and then there's your two pumps. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what they're going for. It's just odd. At least this one makes sense. If their stickers, gosh, their sticker quality is awful. They all have this clear plastic over them. And once that peels off, then they're just so sticky. Like, that's actually sticky. That I can't clean it off. I cannot clean the... I hate it. It looks awful. It looks so bad. These here were actually supposed to go on little covers, but... I threw them back here. I thought it looked better until I pressure washed this off one day, and that was a mistake. It just took that off, took the plastic off these. And, yeah, I don't know. I have some gripes on this thing. Really good mower if you're just going to use it for homeowner. I'm beginning to learn that I should have spent some more money and got more commercial mower. So I was able to get the belt back on. I don't have a tension gauge. All the stuff I have, I don't have a tension gauge that I know of. It says uh, 60 and 65. Recheck the belt tension after a half hour. So I have no idea of knowing what 60 to 65 looks like or sounds like because uh, I mean, it feels good and tight. We'll run with that. I gotta put the other nut back on. You take it. These are uh, three quarter inch nuts. So you take that and you twist the two together and it's a jam nut. Basically, you twist this one and that one against each other and then the whole thing won't move. So we're going to do that and see if this thing works. Well, let's see what happens. We'll pull the choke out and... There goes nothing, right? Oh, wait a minute. Not yet. I got ahead of myself. This leads me to my next complaint. I never got the other cotter pin. I was stuck out there. I was lucky I had a drill bit set in my truck. So I had to take a little one and shove it in there. What is this? It doesn't even say it's such a cheap set. Some of them say on the end what they are. But I'm supposed to have a cotter key pin. So stupid, so stupid. This is how you do that bad boy. You pull out and there's a little catch here. That's all you need. You almost have it to where you could do that. You've got these little slots on either side. All you need is a little, a little round thing on here. You just pull it out and over and there you would have it. So this is just dumb. If I hadn't had that drill bit, I'd have a heck of a time getting this thing to the trailer. I will say it does roll fairly easy, though. My fault. I didn't have the choke on. These new engines just got to have their choke to even think about starting. Let's see. Ha ha ha! We're back in business. And right on the trailer we go. Oh, there goes squirrel. Because I got to finish that yard I was doing yesterday. So, hopefully that helped you. It's not terrible. It's just uh, be careful 
when you got this jacked up make sure you have jack stand and everything um yeah you don't have to take the bolts all the way off i'd say it's the same way on the other side it looks like it's the same bolt pattern same spots for the most part but you shouldn't have to take it all the way down to get in there but yes it is very much a pain especially if you it dies out in your yard and you're missing the cotter keys so make sure you, those are in there don't fall out another thing now this is going to turn into me talking down to this mower it does have things i like about it but seat's not very comfortable it's i've only got 35 and a half hours on it seats starting to get tore up not very comfortable and boy does it hold water let's see here now you can see where it's wet there like that's it didn't rain last night that's just moisture from it sitting outside uh this is another i think this is part of what caused my issue with that uh there are two long bolts that go through here i need to do this on its own video you'll hear this again later but uh and they got wing nuts at the top of them there's supposed to be a strap going across here the strap is gone and the, those long bolts are gone so are the wing nuts it vibrated out of place they fell in and notice my fans are a little chopped up oh, i can't zoom in this mode but that's so dumb but uh my fan blades are just a little chopped up both of them and that's because those things dropped down in there and i guess fell off never even realized it i didn't know until i was watching youtube and someone else had an issue with that happening but it actually kicked his uh, it destroyed his fan, I think, and it kicked the belt off. So I lucked out on this for the most part. Apparently not so much on the belt coming off. Overall, I like the mower. The deck, it does a really good job mowing. Uh, the five-gallon fuel tank I love because a lot of them I was looking at had three, three-and-a-half gallons. And that five really makes a big difference in having to go back to the truck a lot. I know how I get about an acre to a gallon of gas. Not such a big fan of this design. I feel like it's just, it always sucks leaves in. You gotta be constantly checking it. You'll feel the heat on your back when this is clogged up and you gotta brush it off. And probably I'll take that cover off too. Definitely gonna do that. Uh, Probably not today because I've got to go get that yard done because it's supposed to rain tonight. That's why I want to get it done yesterday. I put foam filled tires on the front. Or I foam filled the front tires because I didn't want any flats. And all that did was make everything shake a lot more. So it helped the operator platform out and me. I took a lawnmower spring off a seat, cut it down and put it in here. You do have easy access to it makes the whole platform bounce which really makes a difference you don't realize how much of a difference such a simple fix is uh pulley wise everything seems to be pretty good but i've heard a lot online of people getting water down in them and the pulleys locking up and a lot of horror stories around the bad boy mower which stinks because i really like the the frame and the platform and everything it's really good uh, with these knobby tires. I can just, I've yet to have this mower stuck and I've taken it in some swampy areas you really shouldn't be mowing with. So it's lightweight, it glides over mud really good. But, uh, and even on hills with this uh, solid filled, I have a lot in between this, the tires, I have a lot of control on hills. I wish it had a ROPS on it though, just in case. And a seat with armrests would be nice um bad boy sells these weird i don't know if they'd work or not they go on the arm and it has like a rest on it i guess that makes sense i'm not going to buy them but <laughs> i actually i'm thinking i really like this mower but i really wanted a toro titan and i think next year or end of this year see if anything goes on sale i might be looking at I know I'm not spending enough money, but <laughs> but uh, trade this in and try and get something else. 
Um, something a little more commercial. I definitely want something with serviceable hydros. I don't like that these, they run their life expectancy and then they're done. You gotta swap them out. As you saw, it wouldn't be that hard to swap one out. It's just the expense and uh, I, I'm actually kind of pushing my luck with these bigger tires, I do believe, and then putting extra weight on the front with these things. I'm pushing my luck on this mower. We're only 35 hours in and I had a drive belt come off i had that battery problem i'm just waiting on a pulley to lock up while i'm mowing uh this thing it has kind of sat outside a little bit in the rain which i hate for it to do but sometimes you just load it up on the trailer you're tired you go in the house and then you realize oh it's raining on it well shoot we'll get it in the shed uh yeah it's it's been a good mower it just I think a little light for what I'm doing. Originally I was looking at a Toro Titan. I might be, might get one of them. It's just the pricing is just so much for those. It's about, not quite double of this, but this here was $4,700. And the Titan I was looking at getting was like $6,500, $6,600 without the My Ride. I think it was 7500 with the my ride or something like that and uh the my ride system is a really neat idea and after being on this as bumpy as it is i'd kind of like to get the my ride because the whole platform and you are on a shock absorber basically and the whole thing floats in the middle which is kind of what this is doing to a point and that actually works really good so i imagine that my ride's pretty nice I'm also looking at a world lawn and I have a dealer not far from me. I'm interested, but it's a little bit cheaper. It was X mark people that went off and made their own company. And it really interests me. It's like a super heavy built commercial mower, but it almost a residential price. I mean, it's just, uh, I, think five or six thousand dollars and it's super heavy built so i'm in debate has anyone had one of those like a diamond back i think it is or anything along those lines i really want a 54 inch deck i don't really want a 60 because 54 is just perfect for what hell i do this gets into a lot of places easy 60 that uh, big toro pro line i got with that 60 at eh, some spots i can't get into with that and no it's not up and going anymore it's uh, still sitting it still runs and drives it just doesn't mow because of the belt setup is just weird and i can't get a belt that wants to work and everything's just not quite right with that thing and it's getting wore out which is another reason i'm wanting to trade this in i want to get rid of it before i start having major issues and it's going to just bite me in the end because i'm going to be harder on this than like someone who's just mows their lawn has a maybe two acre lot or something and does that because i'm doing five to seven acres ago when i'd mow somewhere in there and not all of it's like nice lawn grass. Some of it's uh, pretty thick stuff. So almost like brush hog kind of deal. So this thing does get put through its paces. But I need something a little bit stronger. So, or if you got any other suggestions, uh, Dixie Chopper has also always been high on my list, but it's also high on price. I don't really want to spend ten, eleven thousand dollars on a mower. But. Uh, for what I was looking at, it's going to be about eleven, ten, eleven thousand dollars somewhere in that range. Don't really want to spend that on a mower. I kind of like to upgrade the truck instead of, <laughs> but I need the mower to keep me keep me going. So I'll uh, I don't do this as a this is just a side thing really. So I don't have to have the greatest equipment in the world, but it's nice to have stuff that doesn't break down a whole lot. First season out, and this thing throws a belt and has some issues. It's like, eh, I don't know. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you got any questions on this, ask them below. I might be able to help you. This thing, I will say, is super simple to work on. That looked hard to hard to do, but once you got into it, it really wasn't that bad. There's 
not a whole lot holding this thing together so there's not a whole lot wrong no same thing with the wiring all the wiring is right there lift the seat and there's your solenoid your fuse box is over there um you know all your hoses and lines are just exposed easy to get at and then that control panel you just take like four screws off and you can get to the underside of it oh and another thing i forgot that i did this but when i first bought this i had to cut these back a little bit to bring this seat a little further back for my long legs so seating position that's another thing that's important to me i gotta be able to fit on it i would like something with the suspension seat or the my ride so i don't know i'll see you in the next one now i'm just rambling have a great day oh engine the engine has been great i'll do this thing's going to get its own video here soon uh so stay tuned for that We'll go over it, and I'll take the shroud off in that video, and we'll look in there. So, this here was supposed to be about the transmission, or the belt going back on. Now I'm turning it in something else, so I'll stop. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Subscribe for more.